All right, guys, welcome to the first part of the React Native tutorial series with Django on the backend. So in this one, we will talk about what is React Native, how to get started with React Native by creating our first project. We will explore some basic React Native components. We will discuss how to style those components. We will also add a very basic navigation system and discuss the basics of Flexbox. So at the end of this video, we will have a fairly simple application ready. And from the next part, we will build the actual application. And the actual application is going to be an events app where on the home screen, we will see the list of all the available events. We will be able to access a certain event from the home screen by pressing a certain card with the event then we will be taken to the detail screen. We will also be able to scan a QR code of a particular event so that we can also be taken to that page, to that screen. And uh, we will of course be able to update certain events. We will be able also to add new events. So this is going to be a very simple application, but it will give you the idea how to create React Native applications and how this can work with Django. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so React Native is a framework for building mobile applications. And apart from that, that it's actually open source, it has some serious benefits. And the first one is that it's similar to React.js. And this means that if you have been coding in React.js, in this JavaScript front-end library, this means probably that React Native is something that you can pick up in a very, very fast way. So this is the first thing. The second one is that it's actually cross-platform. And this means that you don't need no longer to have two dedicated teams for iOS and Android because iOS has its own native Objective-C and Swift language while Android has Java and Kotlin. So um, you don't need to have two separate teams right now. You can have one team writing one project on two platforms. So you write JavaScript code, which will later get compiled into native components, depending on the platform. And the third great benefit of React Native is its great community. So in case you get lost, there are a lot of articles, there are a lot of uh, people active that can help you. Uh, there are a lot of cool packages that you can implement in your own projects. For our project, we will be using Expo, which is a bundle of tools built on top of React Native to help developers get started with React Native and develop apps in a faster and easier way. And as an example, we can take a look at the Expo barcode scanner. And this is something that we will use probably in the next part. So as mentioned before, we need a solution for scanning the QR codes so that we can be taken to the detail screen of a certain event that we are interested in. And we will, as mentioned, uh, use the, the Expo barcode scanner. So we will install it. And then we have some information about the possible configuration. And then we have a ready code example that we can actually copy and paste into our project. And we need to know React Native in order to adjust it to our own needs and requirements, all right? So this is something that we will look at probably in the next video, in the next part of this tutorial series. But take a look at the left sidebar. You have so many uh, features that you can bring into your own applications in a very, very easy way, thanks to Expo. So now the question is how we can get started. Well, the first step is to install Node.js. If you have Node.js installed, we can actually go to an empty terminal window. We can go to our desktop and we will create our first expo project by running npx uh, create expo app and the name of the 
and the application is going to be events app. Let's wait a few seconds. All right, guys, so now we need to think about a solution for developing our application because we are not dealing with a web app anymore. So uh, we need to somehow open our application on a device. And there are basically two solutions to do this. The first one is to download the Expo Go application. You can get it from the App Store or from Google Play. It's free. And once you start your development server, um, you will be able to uh, take a look at your project on your device. So your project will open uh, through this Expo Go application on your device. And that's pretty cool. And it's easy to set up. It's a really, really a fantastic solution. And I will use this approach in the next video where we will implement the barcode scanner because I need an actual device to scan the barcodes, in, in our case, QR codes. So this is one uh, solution. In this video, I will be using the simulator which comes with Xcode, and this is the second solution. So you need to download Xcode for this approach. Uh, Xcode is pretty heavy, and we won't be using Xcode for development. However, uh, it enables us to run a simulator, and I want to run my application in this part on a simulator. So I will be using Xcode. And then you have also Android Studio. I never used Android Studio, but it also comes with a simulator. So those are the two options, Expo Go or running on a simulator through Xcode or Android Studio. So now let's go back to our terminal. Let's access our events app and let's start the development server, npx expo start. Okay, and if you are using Expo Go, then you need to scan this QR code, all right? I will be using the simulator, so I will press I at this moment. And I'm using iPhone 12. Let's wait a few seconds more. It's loading. Okay, and this is what we get at the very beginning. So now I'm going to quit the development server and then I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. So let's navigate now to App.js and if you know React.js, you will probably see some similarities over here. And the biggest one I think is that uh, both React.js and React Native come with a functional main app component. The differences are uh, in the return statement. So uh, in React.js, we have some parent elements which are represented by, for example, React fragment or, uh, or a tag like div. Probably most of the time you will use div. And then you have some other tags like h1, paragraph, and so on. And here you actually need to use uh, components that you import from React Native. So we are dealing over here with style sheet for the styles. We will talk about styles a little bit later. Text, view, and we have also a status bar uh, from Expo. So before we actually continue, I just want to talk about those components. And we will do this by going to the React Native documentation. And I'm at core components section. And here we have some basic React Native compo components and corresponding web tags. So we can actually compare that the div is actually our view, okay? So here's our view as the main component and we have a corresponding web tag as div, unless we have a scrollable 
view, then we need to use a scroll view, and this is also corresponding to a div. Uh, our paragraph, on the other hand, is represented by text, our image by image, our input by text input. And then we also have some corresponding native views for Android and iOS. So again, we will use uh, React Native to write our code, which will be later compiled into Android and iOS. So depending on the, what, what platform, this view will get compiled to this one if we are using Android, or if we are using iOS, it will get compiled into this one. So this is the basic idea. And now let's start to code in React Native. All right, so I'm back, back at Visual Studio Code, and right now we are going to write our first React Native code. And what I'm going to do is to get rid of this view wrapper and all its uh, contents, all its children, and I'm going to place a new one without any styling. And here I'm going to place some text. And here is a very important remark. So in React Native, you can't place the text directly into the view. Uh, in web development, you could do this. You could place it directly into a div. However, this doesn't apply for React Native. So for React Native, you have to use a dedicated text component. Okay, and here you can now write hello world. All right, let's get rid of this styling. Let's save this. And let's run the development server again, npx expo start. Okay, and I'm going to press R just to reload this simulator. Okay, and here is our hello world. So it's moved into the top left corner. And this is because we got rid of all our styling. And since we are developing this app on iPhone 12, uh, we have this notch over here, and we have this, um, I don't know how it's called, this line um, down below. And basically, our contents could interfere with those elements. So for iOS, we have a special view called Safe Area View, which we can use. And now we have a guarantee that our contents won't interfere with those elements. So I'm going to save this, go back, and as you can see, we have Hello World over here. So the next thing that we can do is to indicate in our application what is the platform on which the app is running. And we can use for this the platform. So we need to bring it from React Native, and then Below, let's put in a, another text component. And now with the use of Tenary operator, we can simply check the platform OS. And if it's equal to iOS, what we are going to do is to display iOS. And in other case, uh, we are going to display, of course, Android. Android, like this. Okay, and let's just put in platform. And let's save this, let's go back. And as you can see, we have platform iOS. So um, we have hello world to the platform. Let's go back and do something more. So since the, the fonts of our text are really small, let's do some inline styling. Here I'm going to place font size of 32, and then for the example below, I'm going to put in, let's say, 24. 24, like this. Let's save this, and now we can see our fonts much clearer and much better. As the next example, let's add a view below the text so we can nest the view in each other. So we have the main view, and then in the main view, we can put another view, just like in web development with views. So here I'm going to also put in some inline styling. So first of all, I'm going to set the background color to maybe pink. And I'm going to give it a height of 
1600. Let's save this. And the problem with this approach is that um, we are using an ordinary view which isn't scrollable. So here we can place in some text again. Hello world. And um, if we would like to scroll down, we would need to apply a scroll view. So we need to wrap this view, which, which we want to scroll, with a scroll view. Scroll view. So we are, again, importing it from React Native. And we need to wrap around the view that we want to scroll. All right, so let's save this. And as you can see, the hello world is visible. And then it, we can scroll all the way down. And uh, this is basically how this works. Before we take a look at the button and the text input, let's not forget about the status bar. So I'm going to use this component which, which comes from Expo status bar just underneath the scroll view. So let's put in status bar and I'm going to specify the style equal to dark. And this is basically the time, the Wi-Fi, the battery. If I change this to light, you can see that we don't see those uh, additional information anymore. So let's go back to dark. And now let's focus on the text input. The text input will be placed inside of this pink container. So um, maybe let's get rid of the hello world. Let's apply some padding over here. Padding, maybe let's add 20. And yeah, inside of this, this, this container, with the pink background color. Let's add a text input and we are importing it again from React Native. So over here with the text input, we will need some properties, the default value property and the onChange text handler. So this onChange text handler updates the text every time we uh, we type something. So here we need to have some uh, state for the default value and for the onChange text property. So we will use the useState hook. So useState, the initial value is going to be an empty string for the text. And we are going to update the text with the set text. All right. So now we can finish this. We can place in text as the default. And over here, we can put in, in the on change text, set text, set text, and pass in the text. Okay, let's save this and let's take a look at this text input. It's invisible right now, but if you click on it somewhere over here, you will see that there is a place that you can type. So let's write something. Hello world. Okay, so this doesn't look nice. It's invisible, so let's change it. This by adding some inline styling again. And I'm going to put in border width. I'm going to put in, set it as one. And then I'm also going to add some padding 10. Save this. And there it is, all right? So let's also add a button underneath this text input. So again, we are going to import it directly from React Native. And here we just need to specify the title. I'm just going to put in over here, maybe click me or press me. Okay, and once we press it, we would like to uh, console log again, hello world. All right, so let's save this and let's see if this is working. I'm going to click press me, hello world. There it is. So what's worth noting is that the button may look a little bit different if you are working on Android. So. Uh, right now, if we take a look at the button, 
it looks on iOS like a link. So on Android, it will have some background, okay? So it will look more like a button. This looks more, as mentioned before, like a link. Um, if we would like to use the built-in components to React Native, um, we can use touchable opacity instead. So we could write touchable, touchable opacity. Okay, so this is again ex imported from React Native. And we can place in some text. Let's put in click me to. Let's also now add some styling to this touchable opacity. And this touchable opacity, opacity can be um, not only a button, it can also represent, for example, a clickable card. Because on the view component that we have, um, where is the view component? Over here, you can't use on press. This won't work, all right? So um, it will work though on the touchable opacity. So um, here you can specify that the on press will give us again hello world in the console. Let's put in hello world too, okay? And let's go back to the styling very quickly. Um, let's do something simple. We will talk about styling uh, in greater details a little bit later. So I'm just going to put in some padding. I'm going to put in some background color. Let's say that the background color will be purple. Here, let's add a style where the color of the font is going to be white. Um, let's also maybe add some width and let's set it to maybe 150. And then um, let's also maybe give it some height, height of say, 200 and let's see how this will work so we have a huge button right now all right and if we would like to uh, center the text we will have to use justify content center and align items center okay and maybe let's change the height to 100 and now we have a big button which is in fact touchable opacity. And once we click on it, we see hello world too. All right, so the styling works pretty well. However, the code doesn't look nice if we use the, the inline styling all the time. And with the style sheet, we have a interesting alternative. Uh, and this alternative um, already has been shown with the basic example so let's recreate it we are going to put in a const called styles and this is going to be equal to style sheet create and here in this object we want to specify what we are styling so for example uh, let's first focus maybe on this view okay so i'm going to call it maybe um the pink container and here if we take all the inline styling cut it paste it inside of this pink container we can now use the pink container in our view so we need to reference the styles and then what do we want to, uh, what, which style we want to apply. So in our case, the pink container. So let's do it. Styles, pink container, okay? Um, we can maybe change it to purple just to show you that this actually works. So as you can see, there it is. Let's go back to pink, okay? 
And let's maybe do um, another one. So we have this touchable opacity. So let's call this BTN. Again, I'm going to head over to the styles. I'm going to simply cut everything out of here. And then we will have styles BTN. And here we are going to paste those styles. So we have padding, background purple, width, height, justify content, align item center. Let's save this. And as you can see, this is working as well. By the way, if you are wondering why we have justify content and align items specified without writing display is equal to flex, this is because flex is added by default. So um, you don't need to write it again because this is, uh, this is the default option, all right? Um, so yeah, uh, right now I think we can move forward and we will focus on creating a very basic navigation system using the stack navigator so we will be able to move between the screens so we can go forward we can go back and uh, for this we will actually need to delete all the contents or most of the contents of this app screen just to make it a little bit um, more readable and we need to create a new folder called screens so here what I'm going to do is to place a home screen JS and I'm also going to place an event detail J uh, screen JS. Okay, so we will work with some uh, dummy uh, event data. We will have a home screen with uh, the list of events and once we click on a certain event, we will be taken to the detail screen. And then from the detail screen, we will be able to go back to the home screen. So let's create those screen components. We'll need to put in the view from React Native. And let's just put in text from React Native as well text there it is home screen or maybe let's put in this is the home screen like this uh, let's also bring in style sheet con styles is equal to style sheet create and here we can put in screen and i'm going to add some padding to the main view component. So here you can place in style is equal to styles screen. Uh, style screen like this. Okay, so we can go ahead and save this and I'm just going to copy this and put it in the event detail screen. So here we just need to uh, change the name. Let's put in event detail screen. And this is going to be, this is event detail screen. All right, so we have two screen, two screens, one for the home screen, the second one for the event detail. And right now we need to create another folder, this time for navigation navigation and here i'm going to create a stack js file and we will work on it soon but first we need to install a uh, stack navigator and in the order to use this stack navigator we actually need to install a react navigation and we will be using react navigation version 6 so what you need to do right now is go to uh, read the docs and then we have the getting started section and here we have installation. So um, we need to grab this and then we are using expo. Set. So let's also grab this, paste it in the terminal. So I want you to do it right now and then let's do the same for um, 
for the stack navigator so this is the stack navigator that we are going to use so we are going to build something like this and here we have also some installation steps so please um, copy npm install react na navigation stack and also since we are using expo npx expo install react native gesture handler all right and we will see each other in a few seconds all right so i hope you guys um, didn't have any issues with the installation right now we can actually go to our example and we can simply copy it and paste it in our stack.js what i'm going to do right now is to adjust this a little bit i'm going to put in export const and i'm going to call this home stack and we need to adjust it so we are bringing in the create stack navigator we are creating a stack and then we need to uh, display the screens that we want to put in a certain stack so the home is going to be our main screen and this is going to be the home screen and then we will have the event and by the way the names are very important because we will be navigating between those those screens using the name so um, let's write now the component event detail screen okay it's auto imported perfectly so for now in our stack we have two screens all right so as the next step let's take a look at the app.js here as mentioned before it's time now to delete all the or most of the contents so i'm going to get rid of the use state the uh, contents of the return statement the styles and what i'm going to bring in is a navigation navigation container okay so i'm importing navigation container from react nav na navigation native and inside of this navigation container now i'm going to put in home stack and it's automatically imported from navigation stack so i don't need any more any of those components i don't need use state and i'm going to and get rid of the status bar as well i'm just going to keep in the home stack i'm going to save this and here we are so um now what we need to do is of course okay so it's it, it's been reloaded right now so it's it's working so here is the home screen perfect all right as the next step we need to have some kind of a button maybe to click and go to the details screen all right so um before we implement the dummy data let's do something extremely simple so since we are uh, having a home stack which is currently displaying our home screen and we want to navigate from our home screen to our detail screen we need to do something in our home screen so here let's bring in a button button and let's write on press and here we will have the navigation logic so first of all let's give it a title move to detail okay and now let's bring in the use navigation hook and set this to navigation so navigation is equal use navigation and now we can go to our on press property over here and write navigation navigate and where do we want to navigate as mentioned before the names specified in the stack are very important so in our case we want to navigate to the event so let's go back to the home screen and let's pass in event and let's press move to detail all right it seems to be working okay so we we move to the detail screen this is event detail screen and then we have the back option to go to home and there we are okay so uh, the basic navigation system between two screens currently work so as the next step uh, let's go back to our project and to visual studio code and create 
um, yeah, let's create two additional folders. The first one is going to be data. And here I'm going to create a dummy JS file and I'm going to paste some dummy data uh, with the title um, of course IDs and the description. So this is a, a very simple uh, data structure with uh, 12 objects, okay? So uh, let's save this and we'll also need an additional, um, additional folder for the components. So here I'm going to create a components directory and inside of the components directory, I will create another one called events. And here I will place two files. So we will have the event, event list JS, and we will also have the event item JS. So let's begin with the event list. Let's create a event list component which for now is going to be very simple. So let's just put some text over here, uh, event list, like this, and we need to um, do imports for the view and for the text, text, okay, like this. And now we can save this, we can go to the home screen and we can uh, place it over here. So um, event, event list. All right, let's save this and let's see how it looks. Okay, we have an event list. All right, so now it's time to go actually to the event list and bring in the dummy data. So in React Native, we have a better alternative uh, for um, displaying large scrollable amounts of data. So we are not using map. We could, but it's not recommended uh, because there is a better solution called flatlist. And this flatlist component, it's again imported from React Native. And here what we can do is to just bring it in. And now we need to do some additional configuration beginning from the data. So the data is going to be set to our dummy data, All right? This is the first uh, point. Then, uh, just like in map, we need to specify the key. But here we will have the key extractor and we will select the item ID. What do we have next? Let's bring in the render item. So the render item, will tell us how do we want to display a single object. So this is going to be um, uh, another function that we need to write in our project. So let's write render item and we'll destructurize an item. And here we can simply return and let's just return a text for now because this is going to be related to the event item. So in this render item, we are going to return an event item with a link to the event detail screen. But for now, as mentioned before, let's just display the item title, okay? And yeah, we can s specify a lot more things over here. So we can specify uh, pull to refresh, a scroll, a scroll loading, um, a multiple columns. So for example, if we specify num columns as uh, two, we will have our data displayed in uh, two columns. The default is one, and I'm going to keep it that way for now at least. And we can also implement infinite scroll in a very easy way. So uh, for now, let's see if this what we have will be enough. I'm going to save the event list. And as you can see, we have our titles displayed. So um, let's try something. I'm going to put in num columns and set it to two. Uh, changing num columns on the fly is not supported. Okay, so we are going to simply reload it. And as you can see right now, we have our data in uh, two columns. 
So let's go back to uh, getting rid of this num columns. We don't need it. We, we only want the default option for now at least. And yeah, uh, this is the flat list. Um, we will then uh, add some additional options, like for example, uh, okay, maybe let's add it uh, right now. If we go to the item title and we will wrap it with an additional div, an, an additional view, sorry. And here we would add some inline styling with some padding, padding set to, let's say 40. You can see that this is scrollable. This is the first thing. This is scrollable, so it's awesome. Um, and the other thing is that we can now specify the refresh control. So refresh control, and here we will need to implement the refresh control component. So let's try to auto import it, refresh control. All right, and then the current state refreshing is set to false. And then we need to specify what will happen on refresh. So normally we would have a, a handler for getting uh, the data, new amounts of data. But for now, let's just write console log refreshing, something like this. Okay. So, oh, and we need to close this component like this. So let's save this and let's see if this is working. Okay, you saw a spinner over here and we have refreshing, all right? So this comes also with a flat list. So flat list is really, really uh, awesome. Okay, so basically what we need to do right now is to um, get rid of this view over here we want to return an event item so for now let's save this and let's go back to the event item let's create this component really quickly event item sfc oh, sorry sfc event item we want to pass an id a title and a description so we want the title and the description to be visible within the component. And uh, in terms of the ID, by the ID, we will be able to access the event detail screen, okay? So it's also very important. So what we are going to return is a touchable opacity. So we want this um, card that we are going to build to be clickable. So touchable opacity. We are going to bring it from React Native, and then we are going to specify on press. For now, let's just write it this way. We will finish it soon. And it's not a self-closing component, it's actually a wrapper. And inside of this touchable opacity, we are going to display, um, we are going to display the title. And we are also going to display the description. Okay. And let's just define some styles. So we need to bring in style sheet from React Native. Okay. And create, let's create a simple card. And let's maybe set a border with border width to maybe um, one. Let's add some border color. Let's set it to light gray. So I'm going to put in C5, C5, C5. Um, we'll also add some border radius. Let's put in um, 10 maybe. And uh, also margin vertical. So we want some spacing between the objects. Um, let's also add some padding. Padding, uh, let's add 30 maybe. All right. And now we can add the, the style to uh, touchable opacity. So styles, cart.
just like this let's save this go back to the event list let's bring in the event item and let's pass in the id as item id the title title as item title and the description as item description okay and can't find variable text so um okay let's try it out now okay and it seems to be working so we can uh, if we pull it we have this refresh controller and we can scroll it we can click on it but of course nothing is happening just yet so now it's time to actually move to the detail uh, event screen and in order to do that we need to go to um, of course we, to our event item which is which is the case right now so here again we are going to bring in the use navigation and let's set a const navigation equal to use navigation and now over here on press we can write navigation navigate navigate and we want to go to the event so again we are referring to the view and then we can specify the, the param parameter uh, and in our case it's going to be an id and we can name it whatever we want we can call it event id like this and we need to set it with the actual id that we are passing to this event item okay so now if we save this and press we are taken to the event detail screen however as you can see we don't have any info visible uh about this particular event and this is because we still need to do some work on the event detail screen so let's go to this event detail screen here what we want to do is to maybe first of all let's bring in the use route hook which will enable us to get the id um that is passed over here okay so this is our job to get the event id all right so let's do it very quickly in the event details screen we will use the use route hook in order to do this all right so we have it imported from react navigation const route is equal to use route and now we can um, destructurize um, the event id event id and we can pick it up from route params route params right so this is event detail screen for and we can pass in the event id and let's make the text a little bit bigger so let's set the style and here let's set the font size to 20. let's save this and as you can see this is event detail screen for one then we have for two or three and so on so this is working um what else we can do is to actually not only to pass the event id we can pass some additional information like for example the title or or the description so we need to go back to the event uh item and here um I'm just going to keep the names the same so I can write title like this and the description okay I don't need to spe I don't need to specify a separate key value like title title since the naming is the same I can write it like this the title and the description so I'm going to save this and go back to the uh, event detail screen and here I'm also going to pick up the title and the description all right so now i can uh, maybe 
maybe uh, below I'm just going to copy this and paste over here the put in the over here the title and again copy and paste and here we will have the description okay let's take a look if this is working and in fact it is All right, guys, so this was a pretty long tutorial, and frankly speaking, it was a little bit longer than expected. That's why I'm going to move the Flexbox practice onto the next part. And yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, if you learned something, please leave a like, leave a comment, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. And hopefully, we will see each other in part number two. Wish you all a great day, and see you soon. Take care and bye bye.